You know, when I think of Porsche convertibles, I somehow think of poses. The sort of people who'd be more interested in other people looking at them than at actually enjoying the true character of a Porsche. I don't know where I'm getting that from. And really, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's that 1980s Porsche stereotype. Or maybe it's that more Porsche convertibles are sold with an automatic transmission than a manual. Either way, there's just something in my head and I can't get it out. But I'm told this one could change my mind. Meet $350,000 worth of Germany's finest and one of the fastest soft tops that money can buy. Just the way to mess up your hairdo or lose your toupee. It starts life as a regular 911, but it's got a few differences. Things like these scoopy things in the side to suck air right into the engine. Nice wide wheel arches and a special bumper with some snazzy looking LED lights. But there's one very, very important part of this car that makes it stand out. It's that turbo badge on the rump. You see, that tells everyone behind you that this car has two turbos, a 3.6 litre six cylinder engine and 353 kilowatts of power not to mention more grunt than Australian authorities would ever like you to know about. Yes, this one is the Porsche 911 Turbo Cabriolet. So that all means that the 911 Turbo is darn quick. In fact, it'll get to 100 kilometers an hour in just four seconds. Not bad for a convertible. Top speed, something in the order of 330 kilometers an hour. Wow, now that would mess up your hairdo. But there is one really, really, really tiny catch with a 911 Turbo Cabriolet, and that is that it's still ever so slightly slower than the regular hardtop turbo. The reason? Well, it's slightly heavier, something like 70 kilograms heavier. But still, it's only 0.1 of a second to 100 k's an hour. The normal one will do it in 3.9 seconds. Not that I'm ever gonna to get to experience anything like that around here. You see, that's part of the problem with the 911 Turbo. Australian roads are just not set up for it. Still, it doesn't mean you can't have a little bit of fun here and there. You see, Porsche's done a lot of work with this engine to make it a lot more user-friendly, a lot more drivable. It's got these fancy variable vane turbos, so essentially they just changed their size. And that means you get a lot more power down low. In fact, the 911 Turbo all up makes a whopping 620 Newton meters of torque from below 2000 RPM. Now that's one and a half times more torque than most V8s. But if you're worried that you can't use all that engine performance, all that turbo grunt, don't stress. There are still some subtle reminders that you are in fact driving the turbo. Things like the turbo badges on the scuff plates and of course the big turbo badge in the middle of the dash. And the best bit about having all this air above me is that I can hear what that engine's doing. Now, it's not a typical V8 sound or anything like that. That's because the Porsche is a flat six cylinder. But it's such a characteristic engine sound. Listen to this. It's just all purpose, all meaning. It's awesome. And the great thing is you can just hear those turbos starting to kick in right from about 1500, 2000 RPM. Squeeze the throttle and there's a nice little subtle whistle. Bit of air thumping through there, it sounds brilliant. But of course, the big question with any open top car is how good it is around corners, how good it copes with bumps, all the sort of stuff that relates to structural rigidity. Now, I'm not gonna try and kid you. The 911 Turbo Cabriolet isn't quite as good as its hard top cousin. But I'll tell you what, it's not far off it. It's really strong, really good. Just a few little shakes here and there. But I could live with it. And of course the really good bit is, you can still pose. <laughs> <laughs>